What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. If you've been subscribed to me, you'll uh, recognize the shipping container shop here behind me. And uh, if you've been subscribed to me for any amount of time, you'll remember that one of the reasons I was in such a hurry to get this building put up was a place to store my 1957 auto car semi truck I bought. So today, today we're gonna get this thing underneath the shop one way or another. The auto car has been sitting out in the woods for nine months since I bought the thing until I got this building put up and it's currently pretty much winter. I mean, it's still technically fall, but it's been snowing and stuff. So we're going to try and get that auto car parked underneath this roof today, come hell or high water. To assist us in this endeavor, we're going to be using this, my Komatsu D41A dozer. Uh, if you're not familiar with the auto car, Go back to my channel, I'll put the link down below in the description, go back and watch the intro video of me getting this truck and uh, getting it brought here to the farm. Uh, that'll give you the backstory. but what we're going to do today is I'm trying to try to get it started. And if we're not successful with that, the dozer will drag it back here. But I'd rather get it started. I, it should start. The auto car has been sitting since 2004. That's when the guy I bought it from parked it. He didn't try to get it started, he just put it on the low boy and sent it here to me. So we're going to try and get it started today. And I'm going to use the 24 volt starting system on my dozer to hopefully jump start the auto car. So let's get this dozer fired up and drive it back to where the auto car is sitting. Alright, here's a cold start for you. D41A, it's probably 30 degrees out here and it hasn't been started in at least a month or so. Okay, so we're back here with the auto car. I've got my super heavy uh, welding lead jumper cables and we're gonna hook the jumper cables to it and figure out what we gotta do to get the motor to crank over because the wiring's a mess and I doubt that you're just gonna be able to hit the button and crank it over. So there she is for those of you that haven't seen it. So what I know about this thing is it's got uh, 180 naturally aspirated Cummins in it and it hasn't been started since 2004 that's all I really know about it uh, so let's get into it and figure it out for ourselves so we've got four six volt batteries all series up here to make 24 volts well at least I get some scrap out of it because they're no good close up of the old crappy batteries for you the leads don't look the best that's a very loose connection right there that's that lead runs up to something so I'm betting that's the ground I'm betting oh no, that's positive okay well, we'll probably just yank that right out of there and clamp directly onto that for our positive and that looks like our ground because it also runs up to the motor so there you go right there Hook onto that for 24. Urgh. Last time I opened this, the hinges were seized up, and I'm sure they still are because they don't usually free themselves up. So I don't want to open it all the way because I probably need to have both sides open, and that's just going to bend the hood. Our starter's down in here. That's a starter right there. So, uh, things I want to do before I even try to crank it over is I want to take this rotted, nasty 
open air intake tube off of there. Make sure there's no nests or anything built in there that it's going to suck up if it starts. And uh, I haven't decided about the fuel tank yet. I might try to disconnect the fuel line and bottle feed it off of a, just a jar of diesel fuel that's not 15 years old. So what are we looking at here? We've got big old rusty fuel filters. At least I think those are fuel filters. One of them is bound to be. One's got to be a fuel, one's probably an oil. We've got a ton of old cloth, dry rotted hoses and wiring. That's great. Our injector pump. What's that say right there? I can't tell, but I'm betting that's probably our fuel shutoff for the injector pump right down there. Right here's the Cummins ID tag. Well, we got the hood up on this side. We're going to go ahead and check the antifreeze. I can't see. Oh, no, doesn't, doesn't seem to be anything in there, but that's just, that's just a neck. So, that could be, there could still be stuff in there. So, I got some pliers. I cracked that valve loose. Nothing came out. So, uh, we're going to have to either move to a lower spot to see if we have any antifreeze at all. And then, if we do, we're good. But if we don't, we'll have to get something to add in there. Let's inspect our fuel source now. It's got tanks on both sides. The other one's rusty. Looks like it hasn't been used. This side smells like varnish. So I'm betting there's fuel in here. What it looks like is anybody's guess. You ready? Uh, there's some fuel in there. Definitely uh, doesn't smell like diesel at all. So that's good. I'm betting it would run on that though. I really don't have any doubt that it would totally run on that. I might just put some fresh fuel in there and see what happens. Kind of freshen it up a bit. And then when we go to cranking it, I might just give it a shot of ether, help it help it along a little bit. But uh, I'll let her eat a little bit first before I go doing anything like that. Still got to check the oil on the other side and disconnect that uh, intake line. Pour a dipstick, check our oil real quick. Um. She's black, but she's got it. Let's get this nasty intake hose off of here now. Time to see what's behind door number one. Oh man, is this thing brittle. stuff's actually just so oxidized onto that aluminum it's stuck there we go she gone that's a mess look at all the nastiness that was in there yeah I'm glad we did that 
pulled all that crap out, sucking it into the motor, if and when she starts. So that takes care of all the prep work that we need to do on the motor before we try to turn it over. The last thing I want to do before we connect electric to it is get in here and check out all of the controls and make sure that everything is in the off position so that as soon as I hook power to it, it doesn't start trying to do something I don't want it to. So let's go over everything we got here. This is air control, vent side, defrost, vent top, vent side, heat, throttle. I'm sure that's seized. Uh, trailer emergency air. This is probably your shutdown lever. Pull that, it'll shut the motor down. Key. It's in the off position because it comes out. So, uh, I'm betting this button is your start button. Lights, dome lights, panel lights, marker lights, uh, fuel tank. We're on the left side. That's what we want. This thing here, I'm not exactly sure what it does, but it's some sort of knob. Like it, it turns, and I have the, I have the knob for it. It says park and run. I don't know what that is. It's got airlines plumbed into the back of it. So maybe something to do with a low idle or high idle. I, I don't know. I doubt it. But I just twisted it over to the run position, so it's in run for us to get going. So let's uh, let's hook some batteries to it. Oh, and the, and the most obvious thing, I made sure both uh, trannies are in neutral, so we're good there. I'll push in the clutch when we go to crank it over, anyways. All right, so we're ready to hook power to it, and this truck's got something goofy going on. It might not be goofy for trucks, but it's goofy for me because I'm not very good with electrical. So you got 24 volts for the starting system, and then this thing over here somehow or another converts 24 volts into 12 volts and sends that into the cab for the, the controls and instruments and stuff. So I'm trying to think of how I need to do this to make it work for both. I've got two sets of jumper cables, so what I was thinking is hook up 24 volts off of the dozer for my starting system and then 12 volts off the dozer on a different set of cables hooked to these two to make it happen problem with that is that this thing in here is some sort of i don't know what you call that thing it, it, it takes 24 and makes it into 12 transformer i guess it would be so if i put 12 volts directly to it it's gonna come out with six probably or it won't work at all so I gotta figure this out yet. Okay. I got all the cables hooked up. She should be ready to go. I'm gonna hop in there, give it a shot. If it starts to crank, I'm just gonna keep going and hope to God that it fires. If not, we can use a little bit of this, but I haven't put any in yet. No good, didn't go. So let's make sure we got power up to our starter solenoid. Arrgh. It'll be hard to get this without glare for you guys. So this post down here should be our ground. Stick that down there. And this one should be our hot coming in. We do, in fact, have 24 volts, but it's reading backwards for whatever reason. 
You know what? I wonder if this is a negative ground system. Or a positive ground system. Hmm. Just for giggles, let's try flipping all the connections and uh, have an adder again. So thinking about it now, uh, this is this is your solenoid up here for your starter, this big block. This is your hot coming into the solenoid right to there. This wire, and well these two wires here are your start button, so they engage this solenoid. And when the solenoid engages, this solenoid in particular shoves the uh, gear up against the flywheel and then it sends power down to the starter itself, the big round part, to spin the starter over. So I do believe we should be able to just arc these two terminals together and make it crank. Oh, getting sparks. Starter spins. Huh. We're not getting the current that we need to make the starter engage, though. Hmm. We could do it manually, I think. Yep, sure looks like it. You gotta really watch doing this kind of stuff, because you could get yourself zapped pretty good. Well, unfortunately, guys, I'm going to stop there for today because I really don't want to start arcing things out and connecting things wrong and potentially ruining other things that aren't broken yet. So I'm just going to hook this thing to the dozer and get it back there under the roof so it doesn't uh, rot away on me any more than it is already. But I've got all the electrical wiring diagrams and service manuals for this truck at home. So we're going to go home and do a little bit of light reading. And we'll come back another day real soon. Because I want to hear this thing run so bad. If I've ever mentioned it before but the rear end uh, is locked up on this truck the guy that sold it to me said he doesn't believe it's the actual rear end he thinks it's just the brakes because it happened once before he said uh, the rear end was fine when he parked it so there's no reason it would be locked up but anyway because of that uh, if I just drag it the rear end's not gonna turn so it's just gonna tear up everything as we go so I gotta hook it so that I can lift up on the ass end and then uh, drive forward without dragging it. Well, there we go. She's off the ground and I can drive forward, which is nice. When I put it in here, if you watch the other video, I used the blade and lifted it up, which works it doesn't work this ought to pivot a little bit while I'm driving and make me be able to make the turns easier so let's let her eat
right, guys, I got her nestled in here up under the roof finally. So she's tucked in for the winter and uh, the foreseeable future till I can come out here and really spend some time getting it running. So I am really bummed that we couldn't get it running today. Uh, I have all the confidence in the world that as soon as I can get that starter to engage and the motor actually spin over that she's gonna pop right off and run like a champ. Uh, but I wanna work on it soon in the future here over the winter time. It's under the roof now so I can come out here throw a torpedo heater out here and uh, work like a human being instead of trying to wallow around out in the mud in the snow or whatever. Not that this floor isn't muddy right now, but it's all going to get there in due time. Uh, I know a lot of people have subscribed to this channel just because of this truck, and uh, I appreciate all my subscribers, and I want to focus on this truck a lot more. So look for a lot more of this truck coming in the future, and uh, the, next thing, the next thing you see about it is it will be running. That'll be the video that's coming next. So uh, if you haven't already, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Helps the channel out. Helps me make more videos about this thing and lots of other stuff. So uh, until next time, thanks for watching.